13th of the month. Happy July. Hope your summer's going well. This month I have for you a waltz. It's been a while since we've done a waltz, so yeah, let's do it. Um, this is one of my favorite waltzes that I learned uh, growing up here in New England. It's called the Gonzales Waltz, and uh, we learned it from the playing of uh, the wonderful Région Paquet. And uh, here it is. And that's the tune. If you're just listening, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next month. And if you're ready to learn this thing, I'm sure you already have your instruments. Let's dive in. All right, so if you were listening with your analytical tune of the month, I'm about to learn this thing in a minute type of ear, you probably noticed that this tune doesn't have a B section. Hey, that's pretty cool, right? Uh, yeah, it's just one big A section, one long form A section that repeats twice. Now the trade-off is that um, each phrase, each part one, part two, part one, and the ending, they're all going to be eight bars instead of four. That's what we mean when we say long form. So it still ends up being the same length as an ABA waltz, but it's just organized a little bit differently and it will make total sense to you if you're thinking about the form. All right, so here we go. Let's dive in. I will play the part one, the first phrase, and I'll slow it down a little bit. We're in D major, two sharps, F sharp, and C sharp. One. One. so it makes much more sense. This first little part that sounds like a lot of notes is actually just a skeleton of a scale. D, blah, blah, C sharp, blah, blah, B, da, 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 da. Ending down on the F sharp, that's the only part that's not a scale. So the melody really goes. And all the stuff in between is just decorating that. So what we're going to do, those melody notes, those skeletal melody notes, fall on the downbeat. So we're going to do all of them down bow, and anything that glues them together just goes up bow. It's decoration. So lighten it up. All right, I'll show you how it goes. Down. C sharp. B. So that makes much more sense, right? The one you might be wondering about is that last little decoration sounding one, that's just a little bit of chromatic work. Chromatic means moving all by half step. B, slide your first finger back for A sharp, open string A, and land. That's what that sound is. One, slide one, open. So if you've been hearing that sound lots of places, now you know what it is. All right, that's the first part of the phrase. 
The second part, once you've landed on that F sharp, picks up again. Yeah, so there's just a little melody there. The cuckoo melody, you call it. It's all your odd fingers, team. If I take the double stop out, it just sounds down the scale. But I add the drone of the open string. And suddenly it's way fancier and cooler. We've done lots of drones in the old time reels and things that we've done in past months. So I'm sure you figured it out very quickly. Let's put the whole first phrase together. Scale. And that's the whole first phrase. If you need to practice any of that again, you can just rewind the video. But let's go on to the second phrase. I'll do it slowly. See if you start hearing familiar things. They're already coming back. That's a chromatic two. This one's just with your second finger. One, low two, high two. Right, so the chromatic slide is in your second finger. Low two, high two. Now this scale tail scale goes C sharp, B, A, and stay there. Got it? That's the first part. Second part, it's just a great big fat A major arpeggio. Yeah, did you catch that I added the drone at the top when I finished the arpeggio? So look, arpeggio. Right here, add the drone. Triple. That's just down the scale. And the top is decorated. And land on that F sharp. Pretty cool. Let's put the whole second phrase together. Chromatic. Skeletal scale. simple when you start thinking in those big patterns, right? Guess what? We're already halfway through and now we're back to the second part one. Now this is really part one prime. It's going to start like the beginning, but then change a little bit to get us to the ending. Listen to it. So you probably felt very like, oh, awesome when you heard that first part. It is an exact repeat of the first skeleton or decorated scale. Sorry. But it has that little chromatic at the top. I hope you heard it because it's a very cool sound and now you know what it is. This chromatic is also through the second finger, but it's descending. So I'm going to slide high two, low two to my one. D major, three, two, two, one. Down the scale and land right here. And that's all there is 
do it. Put the whole third phrase together. It starts like the beginning. again for practice go ahead and rewind here's the last phrase the ending we've just landed single grace from below, using little rolls, using any of the ornaments that we've done in past Tune of the Month videos. A waltz gives you lots of time to goof around um, in the melody, so you can just put it right in. Now I will show you one thing that's especially cool to do in this waltz, and that is at the end of every phrase, you notice we always have that super long note, right, like at the beginning. Essentially it's two bars sitting on the, the same no. So what you can actually do is improvise a little fill, right? So the way I showed you to end, I'm going to give an example here with phrase one. Uh, if I wanted to decorate that, I could do this. I'm using the drum and the chromatic. Did you see how I slid my first finger back there? gently and I also have the drone going so it decorates a little smoother. I'll do the first phrase with that decorated ending. It's a great little thing to add in on the second time round, right? So it changes a little bit when you repeat back. You could also improvise your own. Let's take a look at the second phrase. Big A major. That's how we do it normally. Now what about the same thing? We don't need a chromatic for this one. And notice I'm doing it all on the same bow, right? So it stays super smooth. 
I'll do the second phrase with the decorated ending. Nice little touch. Now the third phrase, that one that ends on the the B minor chord that's so beautiful. Personally, when I play this waltz, I don't decorate that one the second time around because it's so pure and so beautiful. I feel like keeping it simple is the way to go. But your taste may not agree with mine. You could improvise anything you like over there. And then the third, oh, sorry, the fourth phrase, that's already decorated by your ending. a little bit, a second time through that sounds totally different and more expressive than the first time through. Great trick. Always take advantage of that melodic space to goof around. Alright guys, that's the Gonzales Waltz. There's some cool ideas in there hopefully for you to play with, the little chromatic, the idea of listening for skeletal melodies that will really help you in all your waltz playing. And either way, I would love to play this tune with you uh, when I bump into you in person out there on the road. As always, if you want to see sheet music for this, um, if you are subscribed to my mailing list, you'll get that. I send it out especially as a little extra for anyone who is subscribed to my email list. Uh, and you can find it at www.mariblack.com and sign up for the newsletter. You too will get two of the months in your mailbox every month. Have a great time, guys. I'll see you in August. Happy fiddling!